going. All right, so right now we're out here at the fire station. We got the HMC 150 rolling. Uh, now it's rolling. Um, uh, and I got like the full on setup right here. So we got the uh, T3I over here getting a, a shot of me kind of pointing up, gives an interesting angle to the whole thing. And then of course I got the HMC 150 going and we got Brian behind the ADD over there. And um, right now, what I have for this setup, this is like my ideal running gun setup for this camera. When I have everything brought out, which kind of can be easy to use, which is really nice because of the monopod. This is one of the most important things to this setup because I can use it, I can handhold it, or I can just ditch it, throw it off, you know, which I'm not gonna throw it because I don't wanna scratch it. But the idea is behind this, it gives me more stability and I can kind of move back and forth um, between stuff and it makes it a little easier to hold the camera a little bit since all the weight is kind of going down into this um, so what I got is uh, since it's so bright outside I have to put the ND filter all the way to 1 64th of a stop because it's extremely bright and if you remember um, ND filters are basically sunglasses for cameras but they're sunglasses that you can adjust and that's what makes it really interesting. Because if it's really bright outside, most of the time, you want sunglasses because it's extremely bright. You don't want to burn out your eyes. So you don't want to do the same thing to the camera and you don't want it to look completely white. Um, so what we did is we made it to 164th because we don't want the scene to look like Valhalla today. Um, so, we got that all the way up and I got it cranked, the f-stop cranked up to um, 6.8 on the f-stop. Um, uh, mainly because I still want to be able to capture what's there, but I can adjust with the um, scroll wheel right here. This is the focus ring, but um, there's a setting right here for the ring where you can either have it be the focus when you're in manual focus, or you can have it be the iris which is also really neat. Um, just hold it up, Brian. And um, of course, uh, the audio settings are always like they are. I have one turned down slightly on one channel. And what that allows me to do is record a safety track. And a safety track is extremely useful if there's like a really loud noise. And let's say you're editing and you see the waveform. And if it peaks up through and you can't see the, the peaks anymore, that means you've lost that information. It's gone forever. You can't recover it. It's too loud and it just doesn't work well. So if you have one that's slightly turned down, you can actually save that audio file because one is slightly quieter than the other. If something's really loud, like a truck, you know, comes by or something big and loud that makes a really loud noise, you can save that information by recording the safety track. Of course, since it's really bright, I'm gonna ditch the LCD screen, so I'm gonna just close it like that. And I'm gonna be looking through the viewfinder because that's really the only way I can see because I can literally not see on the LCD screen when it's this bright. The sun is literally right there. Um, <laughs> mushrooms. Also, another important thing, get the rack zoom. Uh, now, sometimes, depending on what I, what's happening, I'll have the monopod and hold it like this sometimes, but sometimes of course I need to zoom. So what I'll do is I'll have one hand here and then I say I need to switch to zoom. I'll put the other hand here and then slide the other hand here. And this is all happening in a matter of seconds because I got to do it like really quick. So if I'm going like as fast as possible, that's about how fast I can go. Cause you got to do it really quickly. Um, so you're switching really quick to the other hand to be able to zoom in on something like say one of the fire trucks took off you started recording you're you're running and you're you're just zooming in to the action and it's it's a really it's a balancing act and that's what makes it really nice 
is that you gotta learn how to balance it and work with something that can be complete chaos. And that's what's really neat, is that you're working, you don't know what's gonna happen. There could be a fire five minutes from now. We don't know. Or maybe just someone got stuck on the sidewalk who's, you know, in a remote control chair or whatever. You never know what could possibly happen. Or it could just be a day where everybody's just kind of sitting around. You never know. Um, like literally right when we got here today, um, they had an emergency. Like the exact moment we got here, started putting down our gear, a fire truck come, we, not a fire truck, uh, an emergency call comes on and they apparently had to go to a fire where um, uh, one of the stoves had um, a cooking fire or whatever. And um, so like right when we got here, we just pulled out the cameras as fast as possible. And that's what makes this camera good because you can kind of just pull it out of the bag, slap on the battery. As long as you have the SD card in, make sure you always have the SD card in because you don't want to start recording stuff and you realize later, oh, I didn't record anything because I've done that before. Um, but when you know that everything's set up, even if it's in its most basic form without the mic, without the monopod, it can still get great footage because you can quickly just grab it and start filming. And that's what I had to do. I just grabbed it out of the bag as fast as possible, threw on the mic and just ran. And I just had to go as fast as possible to try to record the footage because that's just all I can do. And that's how, that's how you got to learn with uh, documentary filmmaking and especially like the cinema verite style. Um, the cinema verite style, by the way, was kind of like the style that they used back in World War II, uh, early World War II, where they had these big film cameras. You see some of the footage of the bombers. You see the footage where they strap the cameras to the planes and stuff like that. Or you see the footage of the Germans marching into Poland um, that's a lot where that style came from because it's chaotic. So they're standing there filming this insane event, by the way. Um, of course, everybody thought after World War I, there would never be another great war. And then, of course, another one comes along. And um, anyways, the point is that it is chaotic. And the point is, during that time, they're filming like a war. They're filming like an actual active combat situation like they're in the bomber they're filming the inside of the b-17 while they're taking fire from messersmiths they're um you're right there in it you don't know what's going to happen or maybe you could even be like um later on some of the stuff from vietnam uh there's actually some video footage of where they're out on patrol they got some tv guys walking with them and then immediately you hear over um someone yells vc 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 they're getting shot at just right just out of nowhere they're just walking on the trail or whatever you know on patrol and then immediately just out of nowhere they get attacked insane that's what you got to be like you got to act like there's going to be something crazy that's going to happen at any moment and you got to be prepare, prepared for that and that's what this camera offers a lot and pretty much all my other cameras that i use the ADD and stuff. This one does it the best because it's a camcorder and it can record a long time and stuff like that. But um, that's what makes this camera really good because you can quickly, you have all the settings right here. You don't have to scroll through some stupid menu setting built into the camera while you're wasting valuable time when there could be like a fire or something like that happening. So that's what makes the 150 a perfect camera for that job thank you guys for watching please like subscribe and i'll see you next time